brought the little poop back. I always say it just looks like a poop emoji on my head, but I'm embracing it. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my <laughs> book haul video. Oh boy, where do I even start? So, some of you may know that this year I was trying really hard to control the amount of books that I bought. I can only buy as many books as I read. That has already failed pretty miserably. I have only read one book this year. It was Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe, which by the way is amazing and I am so, so mad at myself because I've had that book for I think about two years now and I've tried to read it on multiple occasions but something always came up and I would never finish it and now that I did finish it I just can't help but think of what I missed those two years of my life and I'm very mad about it but anyway that's basically the only book I've read so far um, but I have a stack of books here that I'm gonna share. First I'm gonna start out with this which is Flashfall by Jenny Moyer. This it was the January Bookly Box. I am a Bookly Box affiliate and they sent me a box every month to review and unbox for you guys um, and this was the book that was included in that one. If you guys want to see the unboxing for everything that I got in that box as always links up there. Next up are um, the real culprits of my loss of self-control um, because I was having a really difficult time in uh, like towards the end of January like when I when I came back from Mexico I remembered that I actually had a gift card that a friend gave me for Christmas for Barnes & Noble so yeah I kind of threw caution out the window and I just bought a couple of books can't resist sales <laughs> um, and free books which but it's basically what this is because my friend gave me the gift card so I need to do better in the upcoming months. The first one that I picked up is this Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. This is a book that I've had my eyes on for the longest time. This is basically a collection of essays by Roxane Gay exploring feminism. From what I understand though, this isn't really a feminism theology type of book. This is definitely a more personalized account of feminism from Roxanne Gay's perspective. These are very personal essays so if you are on the lookout for something that is more like feminism as a whole I don't think this is a good option. I probably won't read it all in one go because I never read nonfiction all in one go. I usually read it in pieces because this is a collection of essays. I feel like that will be something that I I can do even if it does take me a little while to get through the entire book and I actually just realized that you're gonna see a bit of a theme within like all the books that I picked up or most of the books that I picked up is that I picked up a lot of like cute romance. The first one is By Your Side by Casey West. This is her newest release with Harper Teen. I know that she has another book coming out I believe in July but that one it's, is with Scholastic. I am dying to get my hands on that one as well. You guys know I have become a new fan of Casey West. I just find her books to be incredibly adorable and sweet and just what I need. I know that it is about a girl and a guy who gets stuck in a library overnight or something like that. Either way, I'm excited to get into it. Cute, fluffy, everything that I need right now. Keeping up with the cute, fluffy romance theme here, we have uh, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. This is a book that I've wanted to get since it came out, but I just never did. And then I've been seeing it pop up on my Twitter a lot lately. Um, I think it's just because there's been so many news regarding the movie because this is becoming a movie. It like renewed my excitement for this book. I have heard really good things about this so I am very excited to finally jump into it. And I was actually almost gonna read it this weekend but I decided to go with another book <laughs> in the end but this is definitely on my TBR for March. Under Rose Tainted Skies by Louise Gornall. This is about a girl who is severely agoraphobic I believe. Um, so that basically means that she doesn't leave her room or her house maybe. I have heard that her agoraphobia is presented in a very realistic way. Super super excited to read this. This is also on my March TBR. I don't know if I'm gonna get around to it um, but very very excited to jump into this. So that was going to be it for my book buying right? I was like okay I have four books that's fine. I could read four books in a month. Everything's fine. And then I got 
a email from the book outlet which you guys know is like the love of my life like honestly at least 70% of the books that I own have come from the book outlet because I just am book outlet trash and I love them and I have a wish list set up on the book outlet so every time that one of the books that is on my wish list becomes available they email me and when they emailed me that this book had become available I had to jump at the chance because it's what I do. The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is the first book in a trilogy I believe. I believe the last book in the trilogy is gonna come out soon. Um, I say soon because I'm not sure when it is going to come out because I think it just keeps getting pushed back which is actually one of the reasons why I have been putting off this book for so long but when the book outlet has it for like five dollars I'm not gonna say no. So I picked it up, super excited. This is a high fantasy trilogy. The thing that I particularly found so cool about this series is that I believe we follow the main character throughout his entire life in the whole series. So right from like the moment he is born until the moment that he dies, I assume, is what this trilogy is about. And that I am all for. It is a pretty big book so I don't know when I'm gonna get around to it. I'm still feeling a little slumpy right now so I don't know if this is the best option for me to get into right now but again five dollars book outlet. I wasn't gonna say no. <laughs> I also picked up two books because if you buy something from the book outlet you need to make that shipping cost mean something. You know what I mean? This is the way my mind works so yeah I picked up two other books um, and they're both contemporaries romance contemporaries because that's something that I'm into apparently now. Everything Leads to You by Nina LaCour. This is one that I have seen on the book outlet for the longest time. I fell in love with the cover. I just love the cover. Recently, I know that Nina LaCour recently took out a new book and I think it's We Are Okay, which I also really want to get my hands on. The cover for that is also beautiful. That kind of gave me the little push that I needed, plus the fact that it was like $1.50, I think, on the book outlet, so that always helps. And then last, from the book outlet is Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson. This is the only Morgan Matson book I don't own, I believe. Well, of out of the books that she has written as Morgan Matson. Um, I don't own any of her Katie Flynn books yet. I'm probably gonna save this for the summer though, just because I feel like that's very fitting. I have heard that this book makes a lot of people cry though, so. Also, I just realized, by the way, that I'm not giving synopses for all of these books. Um, but as always, if you guys are interested in finding out more about them, I have links in the in the description box. I always put that in there. Next up is a book that was recently sent to me, and it is Our Own Private Universe by Robin Talley. I received an ARC version of this, but this book has already come out. I believe it came out on January 31st. I'm super, super excited to read this, mostly because this book is supposed to take place in Mexico. Like, in Mexico City, in, I think, this book is, like, on my priorities list for March. I also know that it features like a bisexual character I believe also like a lesbian character if I am right I have high hopes for this but I'm also a little bit cautious because it takes place in Mexico I don't know how Mexico is going to be portrayed I don't know how Mexicans are going to be portrayed and also there are like LGBTQ plus characters in this I am a little cautious about just a representation in general how that's going to be portrayed here but I am very excited to read this. I'm definitely going to keep you guys updated on this one. Last two books are books that I actually picked up at a library sale that I went to with my little brother. Um, he has been begging me to take him to a library sale for a few months now since I told him that those are things that actually happen um, and I decided to take him this past month and he picked up a couple of books which I'm not really going to share with you guys because those are his books um, but I did manage to find two books um, for myself. First one is one that he actually found for me. The Martian by Andy Weir. This is a book that I've wanted to read I think since like before the movie came out I just never got around to it. It's actually the reason why I haven't watched the movie yet because I really wanted to read the book beforehand because I have heard that this is hilarious. Apparently it features potatoes a lot, which potatoes are one of my favorite things in the entire universe. Um, I'm not a huge fan of like the movie cover edition, but considering I got like a whole bag of books for like four dollars, I'm not gonna complain. Yeah, I'm probably gonna read this like when I need a good laugh, which may be soon. And then last I have 
on writing well by William Sinzer. One of the best professors that I had he recommended this book to us. I've been trying to build a little library of like writing books and I just it just didn't feel right if I didn't have this book so I was actually gonna buy the new edition but when I saw this there. I have heard really good things about this. It is more for writing nonfiction. A lot of the advice they get for writing nonfiction can be very applicable to writing fiction as well and vice versa. So um, I'm excited to jump into this, which again, it's probably going to take me a really long time to get through it just because that's how I read nonfiction. I don't really read it in one sitting. Like I usually prefer to read fiction books. Um, but I am looking forward to improving my writing, hopefully, with this. And now jumping onto the last book that I want to share with you guys. It is actually from Owl Crate. So I was sent this Owl Crate box. I think this was their January box. And I am really, really late in unboxing it. And I'm really, really sorry, Owl Crate. Um, everything has just been a little crazy. Actually, my brother has already unboxed this for me. I do have... Um, an idea of what's in here um, just because he did show me one of the things that is in here. As for the rest of the stuff, I still haven't seen them. This is the first Owl Crate unboxing that I've ever done, which I'm very excited about. So this was the Owl Crate Theater Box, which featured a retelling of an old classic. First one is this, which I have. This is one of the things that my brother showed me and I've been dying to open it, but I I couldn't until I did a proper unboxing for this. This is the first edition tea. This is Little Prince themed and it is a mint and rose herbal tea. I have run out of all my teas. I only have chamomile and I don't really love chamomile all that much to be honest. Um, it has peppermint and spearmint which I love minty teas. Peppermint is actually one of my favorite teas. Also spearmint I think. That's Yerba Buena right? Spearmint is Yerba Buena. Anyway yeah I'm excited to try this. Next we also have another thing that my little brother showed me and this is a soap. This is the tea soap books in Owl Crate. This is the secret garden soap. It has white tea and berries. So let's see what it smells like. It smells like blueberry bread. Oh yeah I'm a fan. Blueberry muffins are one of my favorite things. Next up, let's see, we have a magnet and it is Le Fantôme de l'Opéra. Um, I think we have already established that my French accent really sucks. But anyway, this is a Phantom of the Opera magnet. It's beautiful. It's so, so pretty. Ooh, we have a bookmark, which again, you could never have enough bookmarks. So this one says, oh, it's over here. Everything was beautiful and nothing hurt. Where is this from? Is it from the Phantom of the Opera? Let me know where this is from. This is super pretty though. It's like watercolor and I love the cursive writing on it. Next we have a pin. It just says the Owl Crate Theater. This I'm going to put on my pin bag. I have a bag that I got from Penguin Teen from pre-ordering A Torch Against the Night where I keep all of my bookish pins on. So this is definitely going to be added to that collection. Last but not least, well, before we get to the book, we have this Wonderlust calendar, which is a little desk calendar. So this features artwork with a quote from a classic book. So this is like The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. We have like The Call of the Wild by Jack London. This is so pretty. Anne of Green Gables. Did you guys ever watch the PBS cartoon Anne of Green Gables, by the way? I, did, I never even knew that it was a book, but I was obsessed with that cartoon as a kid. That along with like Sawa, what is it? Sawa, the Chinese Siamese cat. Was it Sawa? Anyway, I was obsessed with that. I love PBS as a child. Okay, and then we have the preview for the February box, which I'm sure you guys have already seen. Um, so the February box was the Runaway with the Circus theme. I'm not gonna spoil you guys and say what book came in that box, but for this box, the book that came included in here was Roseblood by A.G. Howard. So as far as I know, this is a Phantom of the Opera retelling. I believe it's set in modern times. Um, I've heard really great things about, ooh, sorry, but oh my god, look, the writing, all the font for this, it's red. I just love when books have little details like that that kind of are different, 
from all the other books. Um, okay, see, okay, the rest of it's pretty normal, but oh my god, okay, I'm in love with this. What? Ah! So then, along with the book, you also got a little signed book plate by the author, along with like a letter. So huge thank you to Owlcrate for sending me this and again I'm really sorry that I didn't unbox it sooner um, but I absolutely love all of the things that I got on here. That is going to be it for this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye guys!